Coming up on Mountain News this morning, yesterday was a day of mourning as the Commonwealth remembered the lives of several emergency service workers. And we'll take a look at some safety water tips as the summer begins. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. The time is 530 on Thursday, May 23rd. Now let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. We're back in the fog again this morning. I know three out of four mornings we're starting off this way, but hey, it is Friday Eve, as Olivia would say, right? 59 outside our door and visibilities from Jonesville to Harlan over to Jacksville or Jacksboro, that is, as well as Lexington running less than a half mile. And I know it says 10 miles here in Hazard as the update now comes in for a buck and a half at Jackson. But nonetheless, uh, clearly, where we did see the heavy rainfall yesterday, things a little on the slow go this morning. So an extra 10, 15 minutes at least getting to work, school, wherever your destination is this morning. 59 to near 65 temperature-wise across the Commonwealth this morning. A lot of clouds this morning. Uh, also take note of what just came onto the screen back toward Campbellsville. Right back through there, some heavier bursts of rain southwest of Columbia. So we'll be tracking that over the next couple of hours. And yes, indeed, breaks of sunshine after we get the fog to dissipate. Scattered showers and thunder showers on the high today in Hazard up to 75. More about the first alert seven day forecast in just a few moments. Olivia. All right, Tim, thank you. Yesterday marked one year since Scott County Deputy Caleb Conley was killed in the line of duty. Deputy Conley was shot and killed during a traffic stop on I-75. He was honored last week at a police memorial at the nation's capital. Several deputies from the sheriff's office traveled to D.C. to show their support. And in the years since his death, his family has created the Caleb Conley Foundation to continue raising funds for other families impacted by line of duty deaths. This is ex work like this is extremely important. Obviously, a lot more families are in need of help around the area. We never expected something like this to happen to the Conley family, and we're so glad that other organizations have been able to help. The suspect accused of killing Deputy Conley has open cases in Kenton, Scott, Fayette, and Woodford counties. He has a previous conviction in Harrison County. His next court appearance will be June 10th for sentencing in Kenton County. In that case, seven, she and Shang, Stephen Xi and Shang pleaded guilty to burglary and being a persistent felony offender. Yesterday morning in Frankfurt, the Kentucky EMS Memorial Foundation honored 38 EMS workers who died in the line of duty with two names added for this year. EMT Ronald Drake Adams from Elliott County and EMT Chaston McWhorter from Somerset Pulaski County EMS were added. Adams died in March from a heart attack hours after an emergency run. Less than a month later in April, McWhorter and a patient on board died when the ambulance McWhorter was driving crashed into another vehicle in Garrett County. We recognize our police officers, our firefighters. They already have permanent memorials, so we are in the process of building a memorial for uh, EMS workers who have died in the line of duty. The EMS Memorial Foundation is raising money for a permanent memorial in Juniper Hill Park in Frankfurt. A former Leslie County Sheriff's deputy was found guilty of murder. Jeremy Lewis was convicted of first degree murder, abuse of a corpse and tampering with physical evidence in the murder of Tyler North in 2018. The trial was moved to Clay County and lasted about a week. Officials say Lewis will be sentenced in Leslie County. It's not known when that will happen yet. The jury recommended Lewis spend 50 years in prison. A London man is facing charges after being accused of hitting a minor. Police responded to the incident on Tomcat Trail in Laurel County on Tuesday. After arriving at the scene, police found 41-year-old Michael Elliott outside of the home. Police say Elliott began resisting arrest and would not identify himself. Elliott was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. 
Police in Laurel County are asking for help finding a theft suspect. Take a look at your screen. Authorities with the Sheriff's Office say the theft occurred at a Walmart near Corbin. Police say the suspect was driving a maroon Kia SUV. They say he drove away after being confronted and nearly hit four people. If you have any information about the case, you are asked to contact the Sheriff's Office at 606-864-6600. And there is a scam alert in Wayne County. Monticello police say that several people received a letter from citizens behind the badge. Police say the scam preys on people's trust in law enforcement, claiming people need to donate money. Monticello police say this is not a real charity and is a fake organization of scammers. Attorneys for former Rowan County clerk Kim Davis say they plan to take her appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Liberty Council filed a notice of appeal with the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. It comes after a jury ruled last year Davis had to pay a same-sex couple and their attorneys for refusing to issue a marriage license to the couple. The council argues Davis is protected under her First Amendment rights and was entitled to religious accommodation. Something we tend to forget when it comes to water safety is what to do when someone else is in trouble. We know when it comes to water safety, you should always wear a life jacket, but what would you do if someone else is in danger? CEO of the YMCA Central Kentucky says it's important to call 911 first. Even strong swimmers should call 911, but that doesn't mean you have to wait for emergency services to start helping. She says it's important to be prepared regardless of where you are. If you have a plan, if you have a first aid kit, if you have flotation devices, then you go in prepared as opposed to just we're having an incident and we're not ready. She says the YMCA tries to help the community be prepared through clinics and encourages community members to take a water watcher pledge before the summer season. New data shows the number of total visits to Kentucky's safe syringe sites more than tripled from 2018 to 2022. Visits increased 384 percent at locations that voluntarily report data to the state, which is 56 of the 80 sites. The needle exchange program launched in 2015 and has expanded to counties all across the Commonwealth. People can pick up sterile syringes and other things like overdose reversal medication and fentanyl test strips. Folks will use um, syringes that are not sterile and those syringes that are not sterile can then transmit infections like HIV and hepatitis C, hepatitis B. Any needle is better than no needle if you are addicted. Stack says research shows new users of syringe service programs are five times more likely to enter a drug treatment program, which he says is a pretty compelling return on investment. And we have an update to a story we have been following the past few days. Officials with Kinetic by Windstream say the issues regarding phone outages in Perry County have been resolved. Several businesses reported their phone service was restored this morning. Officials say phone outage issues were first reported to Kinetic last week. A new housing development is coming to Laurel County that focuses on energy efficiency and affordability. That announcement was made on Wednesday by Governor Bashir and local and state officials. The homes are being e-built with a focus on energy efficiency. They are partly built in a factory, then finished on site. And officials say you can't tell the difference between them and traditional homes. They will also help people save money. Each of these homeowners will enjoy approximately $65 less per month in electric cost that'll be in their money, plus it helps them budget for more. The new homes will be open in late summer or early fall in a development called Redbud Estates. Officials say the homes might be so energy efficient that it could result in a net zero bill, meaning it uses up to no natural electricity. In Harlan, Harlan Independent School officials are giving staff a reason to celebrate. The school district announced a 10% raise for faculty and staff. Superintendent C.D. Morton says this is an important step in showing appreciation for educators. Morton adds news of the raise is already exciting employees. 
Uh, we've already seen the seen the effects of the announcement. It kind of leaked out, and so folks were kind of aware that this was coming. And uh, I had one person who was resigning who wanted me to re wanted to rescind their resignation, which was great. You know, it's employees that we want to keep. And uh, and then we've got several openings where the interest is uh, much much higher than it was the previous year. Morton says the new raise comes partially from the legislature, but what? It was not able to fund the Harlan Independent School Board supplemented. And when we return, Swifties are everywhere, but some American ones are invading Europe. In the meantime, we're waking up to some fog. Some of us are. Some of us clearly are not. Well, we'll see how the day progresses. We'll also check in with a cool forecast for later today. Your first alert seven-day forecast. That's all coming up right after this.